Hey everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this update video on that tropical wave which is now designated as Invest 97L. And so we will be talking about the potential for it to develop, what the models are expecting and conditions that are out there. And also is this going to be a threat to portions of the Caribbean or the US? We'll be talking about all of that and so before I go into details, All right, so we're starting off with a view of the Atlantic Basin right now. We see that we have shower and thunderstorm activity that is noted out in the main development region heading westward and where we have that very deep convection that is the tropical wave being monitored. And so let's go ahead and take a look at it close up and we're seeing that uh, here we have it. It is not so organized, but we do have all this shower and thunderstorm activity taking place with it. And so conditions should be generally conducive to enable this uh, to eventually develop into a tropical cyclone as you're going to be heading into the latter part of this week and so let's go on to what the national hurricane center is showing for it and we're seeing here that it is highlighted in orange of course which means that we have a medium chance for development and that chance is still at 40 percent so it has not changed uh since yesterday however the formation chance through the next 48 hours or two days has increased to 20 percent so uh as time goes by and of course as conditions are going to be remaining conducive then we should expect that this is going to be developing uh while it is out there and something else to note is that uh, this should make a continuous westward motion for a time before it starts making a west northwestward motion and once it continues westward in favorable conditions where there is not much dry air interference and the shear is also conducive then we can definitely expect that this is going to be developing nicely and so as i speak about that let us go ahead and take a look at what the various models are showing for the model intensity guidance and here we have it we we just have four available models but we are seeing here that all four are expecting that this will at least become a tropical storm and three of the four are expecting a hurricane and i'm a bit iffy about that not saying that it is impossible because it certainly isn't however this thing is still pretty far out so we definitely have to wait and see what is going to be happening with it but again this is certainly not impossible and even as i speak about that let's go ahead now and take a look at what the gfs model run is expecting all right and so this is a map that is showing uh moisture and those black lines are called isobars they're lines of equal pressure and so once you see those isobars in a circular manner with the pressure below 10 13 millibars and uh, they're very close uh, that can indicate a tropical cyclone and the lower we have the pressure the stronger are the winds and so this is by wednesday the 10th of august so uh this coming wednesday and gfs is expecting that by that time we will start to see uh, uh, development of 97L and so here we're seeing a pressure of 1005 millibars and by that time GFS is expecting that this will more than likely become a named storm and if it does so it will acquire the name Danielle so it's possible getting more and more likely that this thing here is going to become Danielle eventually and so going to Sunday the 14th of August uh, GFS is showing that this is going to start to move on a northwestward like track and it's going to have a minimum pressure of 997 millibars at that time uh, thankfully gfs is expecting that it is going to be missing the northeastern caribbean and so uh however heading to sunday on the 21st of august is this going to be a concern for the u.s because gfs is expecting that this is going to be grazing the east coast and we're seeing here that this has a pressure of 969 millibars and that is definitely hurricane intensity right there and then eventually on monday Monday, August 22nd, GFS is showing a pressure of 968 millibars. So as I said, we definitely have to wait and see. There can be a lot of changes. And uh, also take note out in the main development region again, there we have that other low. So is that another tropical wave trying to develop at that time? We have to wait and see because this is all the way out to the 22nd of August. And today is just the 8th of the month. So we definitely have to wait and see what's going to be happening with it. However, Euro is not expecting any of this and let us go ahead and see uh, what they are forecasting. And so this is by Thursday, August 11th, Thursday of this week. And so we're seeing that Euro is showing that we will have that wave continuing westward. It's not showing a northwestward motion with it, nor development as a matter of fact. So Euro is really starting 
to hop off with this thing here developing but we definitely have to wait and see and so if this is just going to be a wave continuing westward then it could eventually make its way into the Caribbean and it might bring some rainfall to portions of the Lesser Antilles if it has all that shower and thunderstorm activity associated with it and so uh, in terms of its continuing westward and even developing that will be dependent on the strength of the high pressure system so once we have that high which is indicated by the H uh, remaining strong then it's going to steer the system continually westward and then it might be a problem for the Caribbean but as of right now uh, the National Hurricane Center is showing that potential northwestward motion with it and GFS is also expecting that northwestward motion and showing that it will be missing the Caribbean but nevertheless as I said it's about a week out so we definitely have to wait and see uh, what's going to be happening and it also needs those favorable conditions of course and as I speak about that let's go ahead and take a look at what current conditions are like uh, we're going to be starting off with the wind shear and so looking at the shear map right now we are seeing uh, that we don't have a map that goes all the way to the coast of Africa but out there we do see some greens and some yellows so the green indicates favorable shear the yellow means neutral but when we have an abundance of those red lines that really indicate that unfavorable shear is within those areas out there so once the system is going to be accelerating westward or west northwestward and the shear is favorable then that is one condition that won't be too much of a trouble for it however let's move on to all that dry air and so looking at this dry air map for the saharan air layer or sal we're seeing here that we have quite a bit that is still out there but this thing here is going to be continuing westward into that region where there isn't a lot of dry air so that is the reason it even has all that thunderstorm development with it right now because it is not in a region where the dry air is really infiltrating it so uh so we definitely have to wait and see what the eventuality is going to be for this system but that is really what is expected that's what our models are showing so gfs is staying confident that hey this thing here is going to be developing into a named storm and maybe even a hurricane later on so let's wait and see what's going to be happening with it but again once it starts to move on a northwestward like track it will be moving into a region of a lot of dry air and it'll really have to struggle through it it'll really have to persevere uh, in order to not dissipate it so let's see if this is going to be become Daniel and if Daniel myself is going to be a very persistent and resilient storm and so guys that is really it for this update and if you found it to be quite informative please give a thumbs up and you can share your thoughts in the comments or ask a question I will try to respond as best and as soon as I can and of course remember to always be with wise